I will first introduce about the syllabus and all. Then I will uh, start teaching what exactly the research is. So, uh, uh, this once I completely full, uh, finish this PPT, I will share with all of you. And uh, through MS team or through mail, whatever. See, in this syllabus, uh, that research methodology, Anybody, any idea what is exactly research or anybody having a prior experience of uh, research? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, research is the systematic method of discovering new facts or verifying old facts, their sequences and interrelationships with ca causal uh, with causal explanations. Uh, who is speaking? Sir, Swagata, sir. Okay. Sir, Swagata, sir. Okay, good. Because I am... Once I display this thing, I am not able to see. Okay, so what I am telling, you say, uh, so when those who, uh, anybody having any experience of uh, having a basic uh, kind of uh, paper studied and research in the graduation level, uh, I think uh, those who. Yes, sir. Uh, I had uh, in sociology. Okay, now those who are from sociology background, they must have studied. And uh, I think nobody is from psychology background no? because one student is there from defense that uh, allow other somewhere from defense and all. He might have uh, some exposure to the research. And uh, economists also, they mostly teach in uh, quantitative research methodology. And uh, the others might not having any experience of research. See, what is my uh, perception here? See, uh, as a student of development studies, you should have very, very clear understanding about research methodology. Because, you see, unless until you are having a better understanding on this research methodology, you will be in trouble in the future. Because, you see, when you have entered this course, so please, all of you mute, because it is coming and the disturbance happening. See, what I'm telling, see, uh, in this course, I am going to teach you from the very beginning what is research, what is the research in the social science, how social science is research is different than any other disciplines. Then we will mostly I will focus here in the qualitative research because in the in the later course when you will go to the second semester you will be exposure to a statistical lab one and then statistical lab two. You have statistical lab in this semester. Yes, sir. Okay. So in statistical lab one, I think Vikas is teaching. So in statistical lab one, you will be more exposure to the quantitatives and also you will be exposure to the in statistical lab two, you will be exposure to the species and how to do the data analysis and all. And, uh, and this regarding this qualitative research, I will teach the entirely qualitative research techniques, how to do qualitative research, what are the different qualitative research you have to be very much clear then in the next second semester i have a field lab i used to that is called uh, the rural engagement lab i used to take the students to the nearby some villages where you can experiment what you learn from this course so my sincere concern to all of you so in this course i'll uh, so one second, I have not started this recording process. So it, I, okay, I think the recording is started. Okay. okay. So, huh, what we can do uh, in this course that uh, after this giving an introductory about social science research and all, I'll give you a very brief understanding about the steps of research where I'll teach you the how to write a kind of research proposal and that to research proposal for a, if you want to develop a career in the teaching, career in the research as an academician, then the second proposal I will teach you that how to, if you are working in an NGO, how to write a proposal to convince the funding agency to get some fund for your organizations. Then I will also discuss about what is the difference between academic research, what is difference and also the, uh, between excellent research then we will straight away go to the other, the various tools and techniques of the research where we will discuss about the case study, then 
uh, interview interview observation participant observation key informant interview then focused group discussion then we will discuss about the pra participant rural appraisal then we will discuss about the stakeholder analysis so then we will also discuss about social audit then also we will discuss about the what is sampling how to the method mechanism of collecting the samplings uh, all these things then scaling techniques all these things we will discuss one by one in details but with the course of time but anyhow the past you should be very much clear exactly what is research what is the necessity of doing research is the research which you are doing is something different and or really we are doing something which for the sake of doing so that we should be very much clear from the very beginning you see when we do any research so generally these are the question which comes to our mind what for i will do the research why first is what for i will do what i will do then the second thing is why i will do what i will do then the second is why i will do means you should have certain kind of uniqueness unless not that you are having certain kind of uniqueness you there is no necessity of doing a research suppose whenever you are presenting a problem first means what means you are presenting a problem that i will do research on so and so aspect so and so topic then the second question will come why you are doing the research in this topic in this problem and how it different from other aspect what is the significance how this problem which you have taken for the study is different than the earlier one and then in under also how it will come that how you will do what are the methodology you will adopt what are the techniques you will adopt what are the tools you will adopt and then also the then how to articulate the research articles how to write a research proposal all these things will come then the question will come where to do research whether it is a lab based research or it is a uh, uh, kind of you are going to the field based research and if you are doing something generally the mostly the economics people also they mostly engaged in doing the theoretical research from the taking the secondary data so what kind of research you are doing where is your field where is your lab how to do all this this thing question immediately comes to an our mind getting my point so means now are you are you clear that what we are doing why you are doing how you will do where you will do how you will write a proposal how you will connect everything then who are if you are applying to an agency for some funding and all which agency will uh, you will apply suppose you say some suppose some agency is working on environment but you will send a proposal on health to him uh, to it they may not put interest to fund you getting my point so that's why you should be very much clear that what is the agency where you are going to send your proposal are you clear now hello yes sir okay. yes sir okay. uh, hello sir ha uh, sir can i know what about the uh, research proposal what exactly it is because i'm so new to this field so i just have some doubt like <clears throat> what it is about what like is it about the need or is it about the way we do how like it will explain the how we will do the research or is it about the need how, what it exactly it is see what i am telling see instead of uh, these are the one on one on kind of aspects will come see don't worry from now onwards because when i will teach you how to write a proposal and all i will make a very clear idea get my point so now yes, that, all what to do why to do how to do where to do you can remember here you forget about this you just remember that where to do okay sir thank you where to do you just remember that where to do then then the next question will come how to develop the proposal how to develop a proposal Uh, if you are doing research study and uh, forget about agency now because now you should not discuss about the agency and uh, then come to the basic definition of the research see general general idea of the research then we will go to the definition see if we we knew 
what we are doing it would not be called research would it be research it is called by albert einstein he told if we already know something what we are doing it would not be called as a research research is something beyond to that because if i already know that who will come to the oh, sorry uh, h2o is water then what is the necessity of doing a research that is my point if i know that h2o will bring the water and what if i do some some experiment on the same issues in my lab it will not if i know that the because of this so and so project intervention this kind of change may come so then what is the necessity because if i already know the impact if i already know the reason then there is no necessity of doing the research and it will be nowhere it will be called as a research so there are two possible outcomes if the result confirms the hypothesis do you know what hypothesis anybody know what is hypothesis Uh, yes, sir. Hypothesis. Hypothesis no. is a tentative assumption. Exactly. It is a provisional statement or a tentative assumption that which is to be proved or disapproved. Get it? But either you approve it or reject it. Right? So it is a kind of tentative uh, statement or tentative. Uh, it is a kind of uh, provisional statement or tentative uh, kind of statement you are taking, which which will. Uh, uh, Experiment. Hello. If the result confirms the hypothesis, then you have made a measurement. So that means if your hypothesis is proved, that means you have contributed something theoretically to the research. That it is not necessarily that always you will discover something very new. Rather, if you also found that suppose somebody has gone in the social science research, that is the problem actually. What happened in the social science research? The major difficulty is. Yes. Am am I very fast or is it okay? Or I will be slow. It is okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. So also, we are fine. Okay. So, but my my actual problem is I becomes little fast. Okay. So what I am uh, uh, telling here, see, if you find that the suppose you have taken a hypothesis and trying to do an experiment based on that hypothesis. And if you find that uh, in the at the end of the day that uh, the the outcomes or the data which you collected from a particular field is uh, supporting the argument which has already been proved, you should not be much harassed also there because at least you because your uh, outcome is supporting the already established statement. Is already you are giving it now in here. Even if you are not in a position to give something new, but at least you are giving a theoretical contribution that supporting the existing statement. Because in the social sense, the major problem is we cannot do generalization because the human beings, there is the the ideas, the attitude, the approach of the human beings varies. From region to region, from climate to climate, from season to season. So the same human being who behaves today in a uh, in a uh, in a uh, way will be different, uh, will behave differently in tomorrow. Because you see, think about yourself, the way you react, the way you behave in the month of in the rainy season may not be similar the way you behave in the summer. Okay. The way you behave in the winter season. Get my point? Suppose, suppose you look into. I'll just give an example. Suppose you think about you are staying in a in your room. Nobody is there in the room. The slow music is coming, and outside it is heavily raining. Then you have just opened your window and and watching the outside, watching the outside. So that means you look into your imagination, your feeling will be something different. Then, if you compare the same kind of uh, situation, suppose there is no rain outside; it is in winter season. You have a slow music; nobody is at house. You are just opening your windows in the morning. There are slow, cool winds are blowing, and then what you are doing? You are seeing the outside beauty. Then your imagination will be something different. And at the same time, suppose think about just related to the summer. 
when season is got changed when the climate got changed your behavior your attitude your approach is completely changing so that's why that it is very difficult in social science research also to do a generalization so that's why and here, here i go with this background if what i'm telling here that in the, any research there might be two possibility will come once if the result confirms the hypothesis then you have made a measurement you have done a research you have contributed something if the result is contrary to the hypothesis then you have made a discovery <laughs> if you find that your hypothesis is you proved in your research the hypothesis which is been taken is wrong you have subproved so that is hello please uh, mute it gets creating problem because other will face problem in listening <laughs> then you have made a discovery <laughs> and rico harimi has told about this then the another thing is that the best way to have a good idea is to have a lots of ideas get your point so what in the research we are doing to get an idea to reach a conclusion to find a solution what we are, we are doing we are doing research we are trying to get into ourselves into lots of ideas because if you read more if you review more literature so then you will get lots of ideas from all these ideas you will wind up with a one idea get it my point so means to get what is the intention of doing research to to discover something to get a proper idea to reach at a conclusion for that you are doing but be prior to that what you are doing you are acquiring lots of ideas you are acquiring lots of knowledge because unless not until you acquire the knowledge unless not until you acquire the ideas it is very difficult to reach at a idea so then the third thing is you see what exactly we used to do the diligent search means you are very actively searching see research it is research is not research it is beyond that it is nothing that you will already whatever is done you go and source from the internet google uh, or library it is not like that you have to do research not research it is a something which is diligent search means you have to do very actively you have to search very actively you have to go inside you have to do an in depth analysis you have to understand the issues in a very in depth way otherwise you cannot reach at a solution then studies inquiry and examination you have to inquire everything from a very internal perspective suppose i will give an example suppose you see you actually the basic differences even within the social science research within our own domain of discipline suppose i will give you that how how the qualitative research specifically is different uh, or the person who are trained with qualitative research can do better in depth analysis than the people who are exposed to the field but having an experience of quantitative research because exactly you see i'll give an example suppose uh, you went to a village and you had intention is and uh, you are doing a study on agriculture and uh, you went to the field and you found that all of in a uh, one early morning two farmers are shouting at each other and then you just went because you don't have much experience of the doing the study and uh, doing this doing study on field what exactly you did you just went for your curiosity because you are doing a study in their uh, villages in that villages and doing the study on this agriculture so what you can do you just went and interacted with the farmers and asked them why you are fighting then the farmer will the farmer x and y are fighting the farmer x may tell that i have a conflict with the y in the sense that uh, 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 y will tell you that uh, i have a land which in the little upper ridge and when the outlet of the canal is open the water has to flow the throw the x lands but x after taking the water stop the way and didn't allow me the water so i have no option i break the uh, 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 break the way 
and then get the water. Y replied to you. Then X immediately came and reacted to Y without my permission. How how you break and they get into the conflict. Getting my point. So that might be as an outsider or having much not having much experience of in-depth uh, analysis or in qualitative research. You may wind up there. X and Y get into the conflict because X didn't allow the water to the Y. But yes, but I as in having much experience in this field will not wind up there. I will go in more details that why X and Y get into the conflict. Since how many years they are engaged in agricultural activities? Because you see, they might be having the land, not today. They must have the land since generation, the X and Y, their forefathers, and even they might be cultivating for the last 20 years, 30 years, or 10 years, the same lands. And this year is not the example of only drought, because in India the drought used to come very frequently also. We, I, as an expert in the qualitative research, will go more in depth and doing a historical analysis that do you have the similar kind of fighting earlier. If they told no, we don't have similar kind of fighting earlier, then since when this kind of conflict started within two people, with the new people, then they will tell. Then I will find out what is the root cause of that conflict. Getting a point, what is the root cause of that conflict? Whether the conflict is linked to this water sharing or this conflict is reflected on the basis of something else. They might be having other two neighbors. They might be having certain kind of conflict within their children. Might be ex son fall in love with wife's daughter. So might be or something else. Might be some kind of expectation Y might have on X and or X might have some expectation on Y. Y didn't pull that expectation. So that means you see in the human being the conflict may come in between due to different reasons. And that reason is, might be reflected here. So that's why what exactly you have to do that while doing an analysis while going for a qualitative research, you should be having more in depth, studious inquiry and examination. And that examination should be more in depth, and you should go to more and more internal things so that you can be a good researcher. Hello, your research should be more investigation or experimentation aimed at the discovery and interpretation of fact. That's why I told you have to do more interpret. Suppose you found something, you should not stop there. You should. Go and go asking why, 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 why not so and so? Why this is happening? Getting my point? Huh? Why X reacted to Y? And you have to go more and more in depth. You have to go. You should not stop. You anyhow, you have to stop some at a at a particular point, but till. You are satisfied. You should not stop yourself. You should go more and more details, or which will help you. Revision of aspected theories or laws in the light of new facts, or practical application of such new and revised theories of law. See what you have to do in any kind of research. You should not do the research in a superficial way. Even if you will do the research from the economic perspective, from political science perspective, from psychological perspective, from sociological perspective, from anthropological perspective, you should have a proper idea about the conceptual uh, framework. You should have a theoretical framework. You should know that exactly my research is based on what kind of theories, whether my studied knowledge on theory is having link to that research or not? Can I use my theoretical knowledge in this research or not? If I am using how to uh, use my theoretical knowledge in this research, you should be very much clear on that. Because unless and until you are having a kind of very clear theoretical knowledge and research, you cannot do that. Collecting the information about a particular subject. If you are doing a research on a particular issue, you should collect more and more information about that topic, about that aspect. And you should not only confine to a very specific aspect, rather you should collect the information, more details 
in relating to that particular subject in a from wider perspective so that will help you to get an idea then the research is exploration combined with learning what you are doing in the research when you are doing the research you are exploring something but at the same time what you are doing you are doing keep on learning but the moment you get engaged in the research you are keep on learning and learning the more you read the more you learn the more you will discover the more ideas you will add to your knowledge like because the research is exactly a ocean and you are just collecting the sands one on sands from the research from the ocean so detailed study of subject in order to discover the information or achieve a new understanding of it you have to open details description detail discovery of information moreover research extend beyond beyond just learn so what you are doing research is not simple confining to learning something you are going beyond to that that's why i told the moment you are doing the research you are doing something you are exploring something new at the same time you are also learning and you cannot tell that only i am learning through research it is beyond that research provides a foundation for both education and the welfare of the society so that means while you are doing the research you are establishing you are giving a foundation for both the education and the welfare of the society means if you discover something new that will help to the society unless not till you discover something new it will no way help to the society so that's why in any research your intention should be that to discover something which will help to the society which will help to the community because exactly in any research whenever we write a proposal we always argue that this should my outcome and how your outcome will have a relevance for the society and for the community because if you having an experiment if you have a feeling that your research is nothing to do with the society your research will not whether it is scientific research see now the entire world is suffering from corona pandemic this the doctors the scientists doing research in health medical science are get engaged themselves day and night to find out the vaccines like what is the intention of finding out the vaccine to do some kind of welfare for the society to solve the society to save the society from this pandemic so now anybody any question on this then i'll proceed further hello 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 sir hello sir am i audible yes yes very much audible uh, sir in the second slide you spoke about uh, that the result will be contrary to hypothesis so i didn't get the line or the statement okay so could you explain it one ah. see just see i am telling from the very beginning nothing to worry it was uh suppose we are to please please mute all of you please all of you mute ha uh, so is uh, uh, satyam ha uh, so is what i'm telling is uh, when i told about hypothesis in generally in qualitative research we usually never take any hypothesis because if your research is more explorative in nature or descriptive in nature there is no necessity to take a hypothesis but as i mentioned here if you have taken a hypothesis generally either you have to take hypothesis or you have to mention some research question i'll come to later on don't worry about uh, all this thing right now but i'll teach you details of the hypothesis i'll teach you details about the research questions you see what i'm telling here if you have taken a hypothesis in any research while you are doing the research either you have to prove your hypothesis or you have to reject your hypothesis like because hypothesis is a provisional statement it is a tentative statement which you have taken which is not correct which is like so means the moment you are doing research you have taken a hypothesis either to prove or to disprove 
Okay. That the outcome will tell because from the very beginning, your intention should not be that I will prove this hypothesis. No, you should be very open minded and do certain kind of research to and at the end of the day, the data you collected while you will do the analysis from there, you can link it to that. So there you see what I exactly I told. If your hypothesis is proved, you have you what you did, you contributed to the existing theory. So means already there is an existing theory from which you have taken an hypothesis. So means you are contributing to the existing theory and you are generalizing because suppose somebody, suppose I did a study in uh, in Thalcher and I told that the coal mining has uh, lots of negative impact on local environment. Might be this, the, the, the coal mining has always an impact, but I can generalize but in, but in some context, if the industry person are doing better, it may not be having a polluting and so and so places. So that's why what I have to do again. Suppose I went to the Jharsugoda, suppose I went to the Jharkhand, suppose I went to the Basta region, eh? or I went to the Meghalaya, did a study on coal mining and its impact on local environment, and I found that the similar finding. So my, my hypothesis was coal mining pollutes the environment. That is my hypothesis. So there also I found S yes, coal mining is polluting the environment. So then what I did is yes, I can write that S yes, the coal mining has always a negative impact on the local environment. So that gives a theoretical contribution to the existing literature, to the existing theory or to the existing literature. But if I could have told no coal mining is not necessarily polluting the local environment, because now most of the uh, uh, coal industries, the extractive industries have adopted different uh, modern technologies, which is not uh, doing any kind of pollution also. Means they are arguing, they are arguing, I am not telling, they are arguing that as we have adopted the certain kind of modern technologies, no doubt it has minimized the pollution and regarding water pollution now most of the mining companies have adopted different technologies. Also regarding sound pollution also most of the mining industries have adopted different techniques. So what I'm telling you see here, uh, the moment they adopt different technologies, the pollution might be less. So if I found that no, it is not polluting, then my, I am giving something new statement and I am uh, disapproving the earlier statement that coal, coal mining is always pollutes the environment. Get my point. Now clear? So uh, I have Ah. Hello, sir. Okay. Uh, so, sir, you have mentioned that in quality research, we won't take hypotheses. So my doubt is like, is it not necessary to take hypothesis in each and every research or is it necessary that we must take the hypothesis see, in every see, research? See, it is not that we never take. Usually, if my research in general, in the qualitative research, generally, but not, it is mandatory that you should not take hypothesis. I'm making it very clear. It is up to you because you see, if you are doing any kind of explore, see, it, well, again, whenever I'll teach you the design, I'll tell you. See, if my design is more kind of explorative design, if I'm doing a descriptive or ethnographic research, there is no need of taking a hypothesis. So, suppose, suppose uh, if I'm doing a research on that uh, the agro based festivals in uh, rural Uttar Pradesh. If I'm doing an agro festival in rural Uttar Pradesh or West Bengal or Odisha, so what I'll do, what is the need of taking a hypothesis here? I can take a hypothesis that the introduction of new technology, uh, the introduction of new technology has wiped out the traditional rituals. I can take a hypothesis. Get your point. But here also, yes, there is no necessity of taking a hypothesis. I can go simple, explore what was the agro west festival they used to observe and what kind of change. I can ask some old people, I can I can go through some literature of Uttar Pradesh that what the rural people of Uttar Pradesh used to celebrate, what are the agricultural festival they observe from their literature or from asking to the very old people, I can collect the information that these are the festivals through a different cycle they observe. But in course of time, I can ask some, all, some present peoples, present farmers, what are the festivals you are observing now? 
if you are not observing why you are not observing what is the, then i can look into as a researcher i can look into that where this transition has come up where this change has come up hello where this break up observing religion rituals has come up is it necessarily that technological intervention has disturbed it so that if i found that real technological intervention has wiped it out then i can prove that my hypothesis that is technological intervention has wiped out the celebration of different agrobus rituals get my point yes sir so it is not necessary that we have we need a hypothesis it depend upon the context of the research right exactly exactly hello okay, if you are doing experimental research hypothesis must if you are doing an experimental research you have to take an hypothesis but not always necessary that you have to take a hypothesis even for okay. economic, even for economists if they are doing a very primary kind of research on a particular economic perspective also they can do also without hypothesis see it depends upon the research you are doing the design you have adopted based on that your whether you will but you see either you have to take hypothesis or you have to take research question also anybody okay, uh, excuse me sir this is chaitanya ha huh. uh so, so to simply put uh, if we want to uh, arrive at a predetermined uh, expected outcome uh, which may be true or not then uh, we adopt hypothesis if it is not if we don't want to arrive at some point and if we just want to study what it is and then uh, you simply to put exploration then there is no need for hypothesis is that right because you see generally what happens when i teach you hypothesis i'll tell you Uh, you see, the moment I am taking a hypothesis, what exactly happening? Uh, I am uh, basically confining to a predetermined. Get my point? That uh, if I am taking a hypothesis that coal mine pollutes the local environment, then immediately that is coming into my mind that I will always try to explore as yes, coal mining is polluting local environment. But if I am going with an open mind and exactly looking the things from a very close perspective, then what will happen? I will understand exactly that uh, um, what is happening in the field in reality. Get my point? So that will give a different idea to me. So uh, in that sense, it will be helpful to me to go for a more explorative kind of things. So any anything else? No sir. Ah, sorry. Am I audible, sir? I didn't get you. What exactly you are asking? Sir, sir, I am saying am I audible? Yes, audible, audible. So, sir, uh, I just want to ask, like, if uh, what uh, what you recommend? Uh, if you if I if you want to research, then uh, what is the best uh, uh, on your perspective? It's good to uh, take a hypothesis, or it's okay to whether you take or not. See, that's why I told na because see, it is you and your supervisor can best judge what problem you are really going to take. It is not that me will decide. So you see, you are the best judge of your research. the problem which you have selected and the design which you are using for the your problem to explore the uh, to resolve the problem or to explore to explore more problem whatever so it is the best the best judge is the you and your supervisor get my point so it depends yeah. so that means you see even you may take a proposal you see i have done lots of projects since in some project i have used hypothesis in some project i have not used See, it depends upon what design exactly and what kind of research you are doing. So based on that, you have to decide. I don't know if I I just want to go and do a some uh, ethnographic kind of thing. Suppose I want to make that. Uh, uh, see, uh, that uh, suppose I want to read a food culture uh, of a particular. Suppose I, I I just went to a tribal area and I want to know that the food culture and the pregnancy. when you see in india we have a concept perception that um, generally at the time of uh, pregnancy there is a kind of restriction what food you have to take what not to take all this kind of mane uh, yes or no related to foods are there so whether it is scientifically proved or not that does not matter the, what 
I just want to know the culturally that what is the poor culture of that particular community. So there, what is the need of taking a hypothesis? Uh, why should I take a hypothesis there? I can go and do an explorative research that what are the foods they are taking during pregnancy and post-pregnancy and what are the foods they are avoiding in pregnancy, during pregnancy and post-pregnancy period. Then anything else? Sir, so hypothesis is not about like individual perception, but it's about like it needs some, it should be like some theoretical thing if we take a hypothesis. See, nothing to be much worried about the hypothesis now because I will teach you in details about the hypothesis in the letter. Hello, okay. so what I'm telling, the all this what I'm telling, so everything I'll, I'll teach you one or everything, at least one or two class. Suppose hypothesis, I may take two class. Suppose interview, I may take one, two class. Then uh, your uh, sampling, maybe three class. Get it over. So, okay, it will be clarified later on. But anyway, I am happy that at least some kind of uh, ideas have ignited your minds. So, what I am telling exactly, again, I am repeating because you see, uh, please uh, be very careful in the res uh, research methodology. And I am telling you, once you are very strong in research pathology, you can sell yourself in the market. Either you go for higher study or you go for uh, kind of uh, to NGO and other sectors just after your MA program. So what I'm telling you, because the moment you will get engaged in the field after your uh, post graduation, you will realize what Niyarsar was taught us, what Niyarsar taught to us that we are using now in the field. So that is my concern, at least while you will be out from the institute, you should at least recall that what we taught that is useful to us. And, and if you really found it is nonsense, I have no option. So, and the second concern is, the, in the second semester, you will be assigned some supervisors for doing MA projects. So what you have to do, then they are, if your supervisor will ask you that so and so, so please write a proposal, then suppose Rishika will tell, Sir, Hamput Nihar sir ne nahi padhaya. Nihar sir has not taught us how to write a proposal. Hello. Then George will tell, uh, No, sir, sir has taught, but we have not understood. Hello. So, what I am telling, so there I don't want to take the blame there. We are not clear on research methodology. That's why I'm repeatedly telling. I am ready to take because now we are taking online class, even in the night also, evening, night nine o'clock up to ten o'clock also. If you tell sir, we have not understood that chapter. So can you please take an extra class to make us understanding? I have absolutely no problem. But the my concern is you should be very clear on research methodology because this is the paper which will help you throughout your life and throughout your career as a development study students and you should be master over it. You should be master over it and I will share some of the good books with you all of you. Please read, you learn so many things that will be helpful to you. Anybody, anything else? Hmm? Otherwise, I will stop here because research methodology... No, sir. Ah, tell. Because research... No, sir, I'm saying, yeah, ah. clear. Tell. You're asking something? No, 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 sir. I was saying everything is clear now. Okay. So, uh, okay. What I'm telling because the research methodology, I should not get uh, uh, overloaded you because through that you will be a con bit confused. I'll stop here. So, uh, so from Monday onwards, we'll meet at 8 o'clock. Uh, nothing. Uh, I have I have one question regarding we will get this CPT uh, after completing the CPT or you will uh, mail us today or tomorrow. What what? This CPT when we will get the CPT what you have prepared. I am not understanding. It is not properly audible to me. Uh, sir, so he is asking, asking about like, presentation uh, what you are discussing right now, whether that will be shared uh, today, tomorrow or when uh, that is his question exactly. Uh, that PPT. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, nothing. Don't worry about the PPT right now because let me to complete this class and because I I will add something more to this uh, uh, to this PPT. 
and once uh, the class is over and everything is over i will share to you because you see this document is only for you people and i will share some books and some other material with all of you and because uh, you are not having access to library i will share some of the e books with all of you <laughs> and uh, but there are some uh, whatever books i will share with you uh, maybe one book will be very easy to you that is kothari books and other books might be little top but these are very good books which i'll share for qualitative research you please read because this is this is the time where you can read but once you get into any profession you may not get much time to read and you absolutely you are you are in the house you are able to read and your parents are having a time to keep an eye on with all of you so you can because if you are in hostel you may not read but you are you are at home you can read so anyhow okay, sir, I, thank, you so thank you have a nice time thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir